Before we get started, I want to mention that this tutorial uses a bunch of arrow functions with implicit returns. If you're new to them, or just need a refresher, refer back to JS Quick Hits 12 for a rundown. Cool? Cool. Let's do this. JavaScript programming often involves a lot of data, and one of the best ways to store large data sets is an array, specifically an array of objects. We've talked about the various built-in array methods JavaScript provides in the past, and we've recently talked about how to chain your own methods. Let's put the two ideas together and talk about how you can chain array methods. This is going to be a quick and easy tutorial, so take a breath and let's dive right in with a set of vitally important real-world data that you will totally be using in your application. Ready? Here it is. What's that? Your application doesn't have anything to do with the cast of IT Chapter 2? Well, I don't even know how to process that. But trust me, what we're about to do can apply to all kinds of datasets. First off, let's start with a single array method. We'll use array.map to produce a new array that just contains the actor's names. Like this. Save that and refresh. And that's easy enough. We get an array full of strings. Fun times. Next up, let's return the character names of only people 40 and over. We could do this by expanding our map function and using an if in there, but that's no fun. Let's just chain a filter and a map instead. Here's the code. Save that. And there we go. This logs an array full of all of the character names except Ben, Stanley, and Pennywise, because those actors are youngins. By the way, you can also express that on a single line if you want, it just gets kind of long. Looks like this. Same deal, but less readable, especially because word wrap is breaking in a really weird place. We can do this chaining because dot .map and dot .filter each return a brand new array, and the array being returned always has those built-in methods on it. You can chain as many methods as you need to get the job done. Let's go crazy and create a chain that includes just the good guys, takes their ages, and adds all of them up to a single number. Again, we could do this in a variety of ways, such as creating a global variable in which to store the age total and then adding to it, but chaining is fast, efficient, and, once you're used to it, really easy to follow when reading the code. Check it out. Save. Refresh. 279 years of experience, all combined to try and beat up a clown who is himself eons old, if indeed the passage of years can even have any meaning for a being that exists beyond the borders of space and time as we perceive it. Uh, sorry, getting away from the point here. That being that chaining array methods is a good way to write fast, efficient data manipulation code. Don't forget that you can do it. That's all I've got this week. See you next time.